In this video, we take the new tropical resort and give it a nice swimming pool and more. One of the amenities our resort is in desperate need of is an elegant resort-style swimming pool. Unfortunately, that is not something delivered as part of Luminarti's extensive library of objects. Instead, we'll do a little searching about on the web for an appropriate 3D model of a swimming pool. We've come upon a very nice commercial swimming pool posted to 3dwarehouse.sketchup.com created by Viking Dragon Master. This is the perfect pool for our resort. It has a shallow and deep end, a nicely constructed stone surround, and even tables and chairs. Although files downloaded from SketchUp's 3D Warehouse are free, the only file type you can download is SketchUp's own file format. Here, we have temporarily returned to MicroStation to convert the swimming pool model into an object LuminarT can read. Before we export this model, let's make one small change. We delete the water element from this model as we want to showcase LuminarT's water object and its capabilities. To finish up here, let's export this model to something LuminarT recognizes. Returning to LuminarT, let's bring our new pool into the scene. From the sidebar menu, we select Add Miscellaneous, then Import Object. We navigate to the folder where we exported the pool from MicroStation and select the pool's file. And just like the vegetation we placed earlier, the pool appears on screen and is ready to be placed. We place the pool next to the hotel. Let's rotate it so the gate faces the hotel using the Move Gizmo. For the pool, we have a bit of a problem. Right now it is sitting on top of the ground, which is the normal behavior of objects placed on LuminarT. By default, all objects are placed on top of the train in the center of the object's lowest surface, in this case, the bottom of the pool. We fix this by using the Move Gizmo to push the pool into the ground. But as we do this, the ground fills the pool itself. This looks very unappealing. Before we can clear the soil from the pool, we need to lock the pool in place, otherwise it will be subject to the terrain changes we are about to initiate. With the pool selected, we simply enable the Lock Transform option, the same one we used to unlock the hotel from the bottom of the ocean in Video 1. With our pool solidly locked in place, we use the Dig Brush tool from the Terrain and Ocean Sculpt Terrain tool set. We set the brush to a small size, and ever so carefully, we dig out the area beneath the pool until it is clear of soil. We take our time here so we only remove the soil in the pool itself. Adjusting the dig brush size and rotating the view is essential here. Now, we have a nice pool in place in a level area. All that's needed now is some water. To add water, we select the Add Water Body tool from the Terrain and Oceans sub toolbar. 
A browser appears providing us with a choice of water to add. Seeing how we are filling up a pool, we'll use pool water. With the mouse, we place the water body over the empty pool. Next, we use the scale tool to resize the water body to just cover the pool itself. You'll notice there doesn't seem to be any water in the pool yet. That's because, just like every other object placed in Luminar T, the water body object follows the contours of the terrain. Right now, it is sitting just under the pool where we remove the soil. No problem, we'll just elevate it with the move gizmo. Clicking the up arrow, we begin to fill the pool with water. By zooming in closer to the pool, we can get very precise on the placement of the water to make sure we slightly overlap it on the first step of the pool. Finally, just to make sure we don't accidentally change the water depth, we lock it using the lock transform option from earlier. That's it for our pool placement. But before we move on, you may have noticed the grass keeps appearing in the walkway around the hotel. This is due to a curious attribute of the grass material. If we zoom in closely, we can see the grass moving back and forth in the breeze. The problem is, the grass is taller than the terrain on which the hotel is sitting. Although we could go back and add a slab under the hotel model, for now, we'll just give the hotel a slight elevation change. We unlock the hotel, then we add about a centimeter to the z-axis of the hotel's location the coordinates. We relock the hotel. And we're done. Let's continue with more object placements down by the beach. Another amenity we need to add for our guests is access to a variety of boats. To facilitate this, we need to put in a dock. Unfortunately, Luminar T doesn't come with a dock. We have just the thing, a dock model created by visualization expert and fellow Bentley colleague, Jerry Flynn. To get started, let's bring in the dock object and place it. As with the pool, let's lock it down. Looks good. With the dock in place, we'll put a motorboat next to the dock. We select Add Vehicle from the toolbar, then Add Objects. We select the Boats category, then Motorboat. Then place it next to the dock using the Move Gizmo. Note how the boat bobs up and down on the ocean as you'd expect. If we look below the waterline, it is very obvious that anything larger than our small motorboat will have problems tying up alongside the dock. We can fix that using the, you guessed it, dig brush. Carefully dredging around the dock and adjacent areas, we uncover most of the dock's pilings. Let's place a sailboat on the other side of the dock. This will test whether we excavated enough soil to clear the boat's keel. Looks like it clears the bottom. Excellent! While we have the sailboat selected, let's place one offshore so we can show you object animation. To add another touch of realism to our scene, we'll give movement to our sailboat with a navigation course for it to sail. With the sailboat selected, we click the animation settings and begin laying down keyframes for the boat to travel through.
Clicking the looping tool will cause the sailboat to travel on this course indefinitely. Clicking the play button puts the boat into motion. There are a lot more details we could put into this project, but at this point we've given you a great start on how to use LuminRT to build an active and interesting virtual environment. There's much more to what LuminRT can do, but for now, enjoy our fine resort. In a future video, we'll show you how to create animations from a live cube or share it with others as a virtual reality construct. As always, if you found this video interesting, please give it a like. If you want to know more about this or other future learning videos, please subscribe to our channel. If you're really interested in what we're doing, click the bell icon to be notified of new videos as we post them. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.